So you walked around the garden with me and you saw a bunch of stuff. I only pick what we're gonna use within one to two days. Nothing yet, I keep waiting. Is spring here yet? Oh, huh, it's come to the surface. I wonder if it's swelling underneath. This has got tons of turmeric in there and I'm just waiting for it to pop to life, but we're gonna see the other ones in a few minutes. Anyways, hi, it is Robbie from Southern California and it is June 1st. I am hoping for warmer weather, look at this. Off and on we get drizzle. It's not really the rain. I mean, we all want the rain for our garden, don't we? But what it is, it's the cold. There's certain things that are just not happy in the cold. Like I really wanna get watermelon started. It starts to grow. We drop too low in the watermelon, little plants fizzle out. They go, no, no, no. But let's look at the chair guard. Look at this. I am so excited over this. This is coming along really good. I was gonna do something well, I'm gonna say stupid, let me step back. I was gonna hold back and not plant in some of these, waiting for watermelon season. I thought, well, isn't that silly? I can plant anything right now and I can always pull it out and compost it and plant watermelon. So I put a small tomato plant here that I found that was doing quite well. And I put it in a pot, but I'm gonna get something in here because all the watermelon, yep, it was a disaster, disappeared. So I'm gonna get something else in there very quick, but look at this. I've got my eggplant protected from snails. I've got a little water, no, that's not a watermelon. I've got a tomato plant coming up back there. I don't think I planted that when it came up as a volunteer, but look at these tomato plants, look at this. Some of them, I'm not sure what they are, they're volunteers. And when something grows that big and it wants to be a volunteer, I am fine with that. But this one, let's see, this is also, I believe, a volunteer, I, you know, I have to go find my labels. Full of tomatoes all the way through, and we're gonna see if this is gonna work out the way I want it to work out. But let's see what else there is. Look at the white pepper. Let me get you underneath. Look at this. Now, I have to remove this. I'm gonna do a harvest today too, and you'll see the harvest, because if I don't remove it, this plant is too small. Let me tuck you back underneath here. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna continue to drop most of the small peppers, because it's saying, hey, I'm almost successful. I just have to turn this thing red and I am good to go. But that's not what I want. So I'm gonna get this off and there's a couple things I could do. I could use it just the way it is. Perfect for pizza, stir fry, whatever. You can eat them green. Or I can sit on the windowsill and wait till it turns red. Now, normally I put a hood on that. I'm gonna change it up. You'll see the next garden tour or sooner, a complete change for my peppers. We're actually, until summer comes with the canyon, too cool to have peppers growing. You go, oh wait, aren't you in Southern California? Yeah, but peppers don't like the cool breeze. So I've been sheltering it. I think it's on the other side. Yep, there it is. And I put that on at night. It's just a hood I made, you know, from tote lids and stuff. But the thing is, I've got a better method now. So I'm gonna change this up, but it works. I just drop it on top. Very simple, you probably saw it in the last garden tour. And from the canyon, it doesn't get a breeze at night and then I pick it up and just let it do its thing. But I have to get that off because I've noticed that most of them, they flower, they start to form a pepper and it falls off because the plant's too small. So we're gonna take care of that. But let's look at everything else here because I am really excited. I finally have my squash. Yes, I've been harvesting squash. Now this is just starting. Oh yeah, there's a squash back there. So I've got a zucchini in there. I've got a pitcher back there. You know what I do. I'm composting in the pitcher. There's so much going on. I wanna make sure you can see everything, see? So I drop leaves and stuff in there all the time. And that's a constant food source. I don't have to think about feeding any of my plants. Not when there's a pitcher in there. Let's see what's over here. Oh yeah, more zucchini. Look at that, I'm so excited. Garlic chives back there, walking onions back there. More walking onions, aren't they beautiful? Look, 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 they're walking. And then look at this, yellow zucchini. This is snail damage. I don't worry about a little snail damage. The plant is doing fantastic. You know, if I see them, I toss them out and let them go somewhere else. But what, what can you do? The plant is doing good. I've got tons of zucchini growing on here. It's doing really good and I gotta get that off. There's another one underneath. Look at here, looky, looky, looky. Look how big this is. 
definitely have to get this off. I've got more there, and then I've got my garlic chives back there. Let's see, this is a tomato, and that is doing fantastic. One of these, let's see, this is the sun gold. Is that something? And I've got tons now of cuttings of sun golds, which is great because they cost five bucks a plant. So anyways, now I've got a ton of those I'll be planting. This is a Brad's. I am not crazy over the Brad's tomatoes. I tried them quite a few years ago. The success on them was the plant grew. Look at the long leaves it gets. But I got very few tomatoes compared to volunteers that come up here and even other types. But I decided to try again. And we'll see what happens with it. It seems a little... It just doesn't look happy to me. It looks too floppy. But we'll see what happens. But back here, look at this. This one that's taking off here, that is a black cherry, which is a, you know, cherry tomato. So we'll see how that goes. And here I've got zucchini finally starting in here. Look at that. Then I also propagate. See the pot in there? This is propagating geraniums in here. So I can do multiple things. Oh, look at this, look, look. And I only bought one. Again, a $5 plant, but the cucumbers are growing and they are going up. So now I'm gonna have cucumbers. Now, yes, you notice that I put up a shower curtain probably about a month ago. Again, Canyon Breeze. Cucumbers wanna be warm and it's just too cold for cucumbers. So I'm basically tricking mother nature. I'm kind of keeping the coolness off of it keeping it almost like a greenhouse, though it's not a greenhouse effect, but almost enough that it's growing cucumbers now. So we'll see how that goes. Another tomato plant. And then back here, another one. This is a large cherry tomato. I grew that one from seed back there. Walking onions. And then here, it also had water. Let me move this right now. I'll just put that there. I had the watermelon. Yeah, see? It doesn't help when you knock it around, but they're not growing. That's been the same size for over a month. It's just too cold, even though it's got the pitcher here and it's got the matter in there breaking down. It's just too cold. So I put a zucchini that I waited too long. To be perfectly honest, it got kind of leggy. I put it out here anyways. Now this isn't a zucchini. This is a volunteer that came up. I'm probably going to pull it out because I really want to know what I'm growing when it comes to my squash. But all in all, it's doing okay. And then I've got some garlic chives. I'm very happy. And look at the bottom. I've got celery that is going to go to seed, which means I'll have celery everywhere. I've got geraniums and garlic chives and more. It might be a celery. It could be a parsley, garlic chives, celery, celery, garlic chives. This is nothing. This is just a ring sitting there. You know, I can lift this. I was protecting that little Swiss chard, but what happened was the rabbits have been eating it, so let them eat it. Let them eat that and leave everything else alone. And that's what I say. If you've got a lot of nature out there and you know what they like, Give them something they like, and then they'll leave everything else alone. More celery. That one is geraniums. And then I've got my garlic chives. Here, let's leave this and let's walk over here. So finally, I have got squash to pick. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to pick a lot. Oh, look at this. Red vein sorrel. The soil came out of another tote. Obviously, it was contaminated. And now I've got all these little red vein sorrels. And then in the meantime... I've got some strawberry plants. I've got one there and there's another one somewhere around here. But isn't that gorgeous? That is beautiful. I'm so excited because I am actually using squash tonight for dinner. What I do is I like ground beef, a good grass-fed ground beef when I'm making tacos. But Gary you know, I'm not crazy about a lot of beef lately. Maybe we're getting older. We're not vegetarians, but obviously. But I actually like to cut my ground beef in half. So I'm going to load it with zucchini, shred it up. When I fry up the meat, the zucchini goes in there. And let me tell you something. You don't know it's there. It tastes just like brown, ground beef, but it is there. Isn't this cool? So we're starting to clean up here. And yes, guess what? Gary came out here and went painting. You know that bench cost him 50 cents to paint? He bought it at Home Depot the other day. Oh, a little bit ago. He found the jar for 50 cents and he brought it home. And he wasn't sure what he was going to do with it. He gave it to me. And then he said, I want to paint that. So I gave it back to him. And he painted that. Isn't that pop? It looks real pretty. He's just starting to clean up some of the things here. He wants to get some more cannas back there. Flowers to go with the aloe vera. He thinks it'll be a nice contrast. The red and the yellow. And I want to get more succulents and different things in here. Maybe some more walking onions. Because the walking onions are doing really good here. This is just sow thistle. I leave it for the birds. But, you know, it's pretty close to being pulled out. 
none of the solar fountains are going to go right now because we are in deep cloud. But that's okay. What I'm excited about here is that little cutting of rosemary I put back there is now starting to take off. So back there, it's going to take off into a big bush. And then the elephant food, it might too. But I know the rosemary is starting to really grow. And I do have some succulents through here. So hopefully this summer we'll get more cleaned up. Look at this. Oh, I had never seen this before. But thank goodness I had my phone. Did you ever see a snail, a garden snail, go get a drink of water? I've never seen it. It literally crawled over and crawled down that rock back there. And it got a drink of water and turned around and crawled back. I thought, wow, i just never seen that before. I mean, you think about it, insects need water too. And instead of looking around in the plants for water, it, it knew where the pond was and went and got a drink of water. Celery, and look, 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 my forget-me-nots. I think it's called Chinese forget-me-nots. These are reseeded from last year. If you remember, we had the one here, and then it completely died back. So that one could be from last year on the roots. I can't tell you yes or no, but I know that one isn't, and the one that's coming up here isn't because it didn't grow here last year, so it reseeded. Walking onions, and what is this? I don't know. I have no idea. No, I'm going to have to ask Gary. It's coming up. I don't know what that is. Is it a weed? My, I didn't even see this the other day. Is that? It's real pretty. I hope it's a nice weed. If it is a weed. Tomatillos. Another plant that doesn't like wind and cold. But because it's in the bucket with the moringa. So this is the moringa growing in that bucket since last year. It's sheltered from the wind. See how it drops down? And that's why it's growing. I've got some more south thistle. I've got some nasturtiums back there. I've got geraniums all through here, cuttings, more celery, walking onions. There's my shoes. I've got walking onions in there, old tennis shoes. Look at the um, black sugar cane growing. Who knows what else is in there? There could be a lot of stuff, but I'll tell you something. The rabbits and the animals love hanging out in there. Now here I haven't got to. This is all still basically the same. I'll show you what I did get to and I'll stop. This is a geranium. I want to trim it down. It's it's too much. It's too big. Didn't get to that, but this I did. So early on when we had a few warm days, I got the zucchini in here planted, a true zucchini. So that's doing real good. And that tool that's just sloppily thrown around there is keeping the squirrels out because the squirrels love to go in there and snatch my zucchini. But they don't like this. So if they leap up and they get caught on this, just draped around. They haven't bothered it. Now, this one had tool, but I think I took it off. Look at this. It's doing okay. We've got a lot of flowers. We're going to have a lot of powdery mildew because of this cloudy, damp, cool weather. It doesn't seem to be affecting the plants. We're still getting lots of zucchini. So that's doing good. Nothing in there. There's another geranium cutting I put down there over a year ago. This is the one I transplanted in the chair garden you saw. This is just a bunch of seeds coming up. And because I want to know, see the seeds are still in there. I want to know exactly what I'm growing this year. I will end up composting that. Walking onions, nothing planted in there. And here's the other zucchini. I don't like draping a lot of stuff on leaves. Some plants don't like to be touched. But you know what? They got used to it. Notice the leaves under here are kind of folded, but it works. It's kept out all the critters, like especially, you know, like I said, the squirrels. And oh, yep, there's a zucchini down there. Because I have been picking, finally getting to harvest zucchini. I've got to get my potatoes out. Didn't do anything with that, and that's nothing. There's just some Swiss chard in there. Oh, I never did the video. You know what that is? Yes, it's a grocery store bag. I'm going to have to do a whole video on that. And I made my hoop like I showed you. See the irrigation tubing? It's a hoop, so it keeps the bag nice and round so it can't fold back on the plant. I really have to do the video how we did it. And I put two tiny little tomato plants in there, and they're growing in a grocery bag. With soil, I just dug up from the ground. It's free. It didn't cost me anything. The tomato plants didn't cost me anything. The grocery bag didn't even cost me anything. I got that for free somewhere. I don't shop at that store, so maybe it was at the thrift store. And I just had it out here, filled it up. It's working. It's got holes on the bottom. Keep in mind, you need drainage. Celery, walking onions. Nothing's in here. Last year I had the cardboard boxes. But I decided I think I'm going to make this a field of walking onions since they really like it and they're doing really well. 
Now, all this is going to be basically the same. So let's just kind of just walk through because really I haven't done anything here. So just stop and go over nothing with nothing. You can go back and watch the last video if you want to see nothing with nothing. That's when you can do that. Now, oh, oh, wait a minute. There is the pepper here. Now I'm going to change this up as well. I have been keeping this covered again from the wind, but I've got multiple peppers there. See the little pepper back there? Got a little one, but I've got a great big one there. So this is actually in a grow bag. I have to keep it well watered. There's my irrigation tubing in there so the grow bag won't collapse. I have problems with them sometimes collapsing because as the soil pulls down, it pulls the edges of the grow bag and so it will collapse. So if you do the irrigation tubing, I've got a video on that, that will prevent your grow bag from collapsing. So it works really good. So anyways, I do have peppers growing there. That was the only new thing there. These are peppers from last year. I cleaned that up. So hopefully this will come back. It's got curly leaf. I know people say, oh, burn it. No, I've had it before. You just take off all these bad leaves and eventually you get some good compost in there. The plant comes back. It has before. It's from last year. It's a Fresno chili pepper. Look at this. This just kept going all year and it's making a comeback. I should pick all the drier ones. That is my black cobra. Look at all the flowers on it. Nothing here. Swiss chard. It's being eaten by rabbits. Let them have it. There's no use for me to take that out and stop them. They like chewing on the stems because then they'll start looking for something else. So this way they're happy and I'm happy. A volunteer tomato came up and I think I'm going to leave it and mulch that really good with just leaves and weeds and stuff and see how that tomato goes. That's coming out. That's last year's. That's just, it looks nice on the top, but it's not. See how long the stem is? So that's coming out. This I'm going to keep because this is red vein sorrel doing beautiful. The green sorrel is doing great. I'm leaving that. This is new. So this will have zucchini very soon. Yep. See, we've got flowers and nice fruit in there. Can fruit? So this is doing really good. I've never grown zucchini on this chair. I've had lettuce growing there, radishes growing there, other things, but not zucchini. Nothing new here, but this one I did plant. So that's, oh, 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 oh. Getting close to pick. Isn't that cool? Look, there's more down there. I'll harvest afterwards. I'll go through and then I'll show you whatever I harvested. Um, last year's Swiss chard, that will come out. That will stay green sorrel. It's happy and it's got a cutting of a geranium. I'll probably get the yellow flower pot out of there and plant something else in there or leave it. Just leave the green sorrel. Again, cuttings. I try to do cuttings of geraniums now all over the place. Now here's another one being eaten by rabbits. Now eventually I will do something else with that tote. That's the broken one I taped a year ago. Look at that. It still has the tape on it. I'll probably take that out and leave it in this vicinity. Let the rabbits have that because see, since they can get that, they haven't touched this. This is kind of done. This is the one that I would harvest young lettuce from, which I did. I'll show you in a second. But they're kind of, they're starting to get that dull color. And once they do that, you know that they're past their prime. So I'll have to get new baby lettuce growing. I do it in a whole field, go back and check the video, and then I can harvest for six months and take the babies out and do this. Look at this. I planted these and they are doing fantastic. They came out of that. I actually tried to pull the youngest ones and I think they're doing good. Look how pretty that one is. I'll have to trim them back a little bit. Nothing can get to them. The birds can poop on top because they'll sit up there, but they can't get to it and neither can the insects. And some of you say, but wait a minute, don't you need the bees to pollinate? Not lettuce, not brassicas. Actually, most of your stuff you don't need to pollinate. Squash you do. You can open it up for squash or strawberries and different things. But tomatoes, hey, they're wind-blown pollinated, and so are peppers. So a lot of things you don't need to. And you don't want insects on your lettuce if you're going to use it. And then all here, nothing. I've got some orange mint. I can tell because I know the color and the shape of the leaf. It's more round, and it's a lighter green. Mmm, smells good. Mint that came up from seed reverted back to wild. Yeah, that will be going. All this will go because what I've decided is all these upside down planters I got years ago for $2.50 at Walmart. I would never have bought them for $66. I wouldn't even buy them for 10. They're not worth it. I'm gonna plant lettuce. So this whole thing here up to here and those three are all gonna have lettuce. 
I'm actually thinking for fun to leave the avocado tree. It's nice and straight, it looks pretty, and it will save me a tote. In other words, I don't have to do anything. So I'll probably leave that. Then there's celery. When this is done, I'll probably put something else in there. And look at my lettuce here. I've been keeping it well watered. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Too many, but it's working. So I keep watering it. There's another little one. And it's doing fantastic. So if you've got too many in a container, don't let it dry out. Keep doing water. Now here are carrots. And I pick some, use some, and there's still some young ones, but then I let them go to seed. And then I scatter my own seeds and I grow my own carrots all the time. So I'm leaving them. Like I said, these are going. These will all be hopefully covered lettuce. And if all works out, I should be able to have lettuce all through the summer. If not, I will find the shadier spot. I will not move that. I will set them up differently. And you will go with me on that. This I'm going to tear apart. There is a tomato plant in there. But I want to do the three with the new way that I'm putting together my irrigation tubing and covering it. I might do cabbage. I'm not sure yet. Like I said, we're so cool and I've got to get on the ball and get more seeds started. We had a very slow month last month for a lot of different reasons. Some of you know, you know, we just had a bad month last month. So now I got to kick back in the gear, get on with life and start getting more things done. I could try to save some of the celery because it looks beautiful. I could try to save this tomato or that one because they do look beautiful. And then I'll figure out how I'm going to do it, but I will do something. Now let's go into the front yard. Yes. This is my front garden. Is this cool? This is my purple tree collar that I planted. Look at that. It is so happy back here. I'm hoping it will take over. And then I've got the flowers there. Let me show you real quick because this is just too beautiful. I'm actually thinking of getting more of the geraniums. That was the cutting that went up the fence all along here. And isn't the contrast between the two gorgeous? Look at that. You got the aloe vera and keep in mind, this one plant started as a little plant from the 99 cent store that my friend bought that grew into my daughter's yard. She didn't want it. Gary picked them up. He planted them way down there, as you know where, next to the ponds and now they're everywhere and he just moves them around. So he put two, actually three, he must have dropped another one there. And I, I'm just looking at this thinking how gorgeous and that purple tree colored will fill in there so you'll have the contrast of the purple and green with the yellow flowers and the pink kind of a kind of a two-tone pink flower isn't that gorgeous anyways you probably don't care so let's keep going i just think it's cool there is the puzzle i don't i guess you would call it a puzzle raids bed because it's actually a puzzle you can take the whole thing apart it's all marked and numbered and it all fits perfect because gary made this is this not too cool? Irrigation tubing, homemade clips out of the irrigation tubing, and tool. You can't beat that. The, I, now, I, I'm going to tell you, I could have made it neater. What really needed to be done was I needed the irrigation tubing, which is the right size, to go from here to here. And I might change that up. And then it will drop down really good instead of kind of sticking up like that. But I had a, I think it was a three foot and a, it probably was a four foot tomato steak and a two foot tomato steak. And I don't even need that. I think I'm going to slip it in there and pull the two and then cut the tubing so it fits in good, but it's perfect. Now it's a matter of what I was going to plant in there. I was going to do seeds and I'm still thinking about it, but the way this weather is, I don't know if my zucchini seeds will grow. My daughter's telling me her squash seeds aren't growing. I planted some squash seeds, kind of a, a new spaghetti squash variety. None of them have come up. None of them. The tomatoes are coming up. I could go with tomatoes, but I don't think I want tomatoes right now here. I've got celery growing back there and walking onions. This is all composted, all filled with leaves, all the the leaves that are coming off the brassicas that are all full of powdery mildew, all that got stuffed in there. And then I just kind of moved some of the soil from there and there. There's no potting soil or anything in there. It's ready to go. So I'm kind of thinking about it. I might try again with zucchini. I'd like to have a zucchini there. And then there I'll see what I want to do. But no matter what, it will sit there. The tool will last for a good year. I've actually had it last two years. But let's say a year. I mean, a year is good. And now it just sits there and you've seen, oh, go see the video because this is nothing. And this tool cuts 
well, the tool cuts with the scissors, but the irrigation tubing cuts with the scissors. And if it's a really cold day like today, some of the tubing you get, the irrigation tubing is a little thicker. So it depends on if you're getting rainbird or drip, and there's so many different varieties and types. But the point is they all cut with the scissors. And if you can't cut it with the scissors, just drop it on the ground, leave it outside for about an hour, and the sun will shine on it and it will warm up slightly. If it's really cold, it gets hard, but you can still do it. I still cut it with the scissors. Don't get any fancy cutters. You don't need it. The professionals don't use it. It will just crush the tubing. Just cut it with the scissors. You could also stick it under warm water, but that's it. the sun will do it. Any sun, any bit of sun, even a little bit of sun will warm it. But it's just really, really good. There's so many ways I'm going to set these up, and I absolutely love this hoop house now. I mean, it costs me next to nothing. I've probably got, oh, maybe a dollar's worth of tubing there. No, no tool. Probably a dollar's worth of tool. And the tubing would be, let's say, one, two, three. I don't know if I've even used four dollars worth of tubing because it, I buy it in the 500 foot roll and keep an eye out. Home Depot, Lowe's, all the hardware stores carry it, even, home, uh, even Walmart. And sometimes they've dropped them as low as $35 for 500 feet. They generally run this time of the year in the summer as we're getting the summer because everybody's setting up irrigation tubing. They go back up to $50 for 500 feet, but I saw them recently for 40. So, and then you don't have to buy that much. You can buy a, a 50 foot roll, 200 foot roll, especially if you're gonna try it out and see if you like it. I absolutely love it. Can you imagine these clips fit perfect? Look at that on the totes as well, even though I will be doing it a lot differently throughout the yard. Okay, walking onions, like I said, they are walking everywhere, more geraniums. Look, look, I was so excited to see that my finger lime, gotta be careful, these spikes on here are nasty, are now flowering. We get a lot of finger limes off of this. They're so good. They're really small, and they're like, when you break them open or cut them open, they're like little juicy jewels that you just chew on, they crunch and they taste like lime and they're beautiful. And they, keep in mind, this tree actually likes more shade than sun. So this is the perfect place. It gets a little bit of sun, but not too much and it's happy. The only problem is periodically we have to move it, do something with it because yes, the pine trees send their roots up on the bottom of that pot since the hole is on the bottom. And then I think it needs to be refreshed Maybe we'll get a bigger pot for it and try to get holes on the side that are a little bit higher so I can keep control of it. There's a purple tree colored back there. It kind of fell over. I'll do something with that. I haven't done anything back there. I've got my mint coming up, more walking onions walking. Look, a tomato plant coming up here. And there's only what? This is all blacktop, not even two inches of soil. And I got a beautiful tomato plant. I don't know if I'll pull it out, if I'll move it or what I'm gonna do with it. I set up my table. Look at that, my Buddha, my Buddha, somebody gave me that, is holding a cat. And now I've got this. I haven't planted anything in this yet, but look at my chamomile. Oh, that's what I should do. Chamomile's dropping all these seeds. So just put it in here and let it grow in here. I've got my garlic chives. I've got more red bean sorrel. I've got parsley growing. Isn't this beautiful? And the reason I'm doing that is you'll see soon, this is gonna be a whole new setup. And I think you're gonna just go so wild over that when you see this set up because anybody can do it and it's gonna be amazing. So hopefully I'll get to that soon. That is tobacco plant. We don't want that. Though it grows a beautiful flower that the hummingbirds love. It's a weed and I, I really don't want it. And that's it. Here I'm just redoing all this. And then this has got also chocolate mint down here and more walking onions and more geraniums that I put. The geraniums this year with all the rain have just gone wild. I mean, you literally take a piece, stick it in the ground and forget about it. Oh, more chamomile down there. Look at this, more red vein sorrow. Look at the chamomile coming up on its own. This is, like I said, more walking onions. And then I think I saw, looking here, yep. Another red vein sorrel. I've never grown so much red vein sorrel. And then this, I was going to compost it. This is probably broccoli or a hybrid. And I trimmed it all back and I was getting ready to pull them out of the pots and compost them. And they're coming back beautiful, almost like a topiary. I think I'm gonna keep it now. All right, so let's keep walking. Isn't that gorgeous? 
it, it, you really, if you're in an area that doesn't freeze, you should try some plain, don't get a fancy geranium, just get a regular simple geranium. This is a wanderer, so it will wander and you can't really weave it anywhere because if you try to bend it, they snap. But look at this. I mean, they do grow good. Obviously you saw me put it up there. It's growing everywhere. This is really simple to grow. Literally break a piece off and stick it in the ground. So this one wanders. It's like a vine, but it's not. It just wanders, grows along the ground. And these grow like a bush. And if you remember, I cleaned all this up last year and there I stuck in little pieces. Look how big they are. I've got to trim them back. Got to trim the whole thing back. And then here during the winter, I stuck more pieces in and they're taking off and they're flowering. I love the way I garden because I can buy one bag and this bag will last me a long time because I only use one scooper when I'm planting. The rest is all mother nature style. And you know what? You don't need to because Gary never uses potting soil. I, I shouldn't say that. The only time he uses potting soil is when he's planting seeds in the house because you want to make sure there's nothing in there that's going to eat your seedlings. But otherwise, he doesn't use it. Here, I use a handful when I'm planting seeds or young plants. Okay, this is out of control. See the difference? This has a shiny leaf. See how shiny it is? And it goes up, but it will fall. See how it wanders around? And this is a bush. It's thicker, thicker stem and soft and fuzzy. And it is too big. But I told him, don't trim him back yet. A neighbor came by and said, oh, I love it. I said, oh, good. And I broke her off a ton of pieces and I want to give her more. And then I want to think about where I want to stick them because they grow anywhere. They're drought tolerant and everything. So I told him, don't cut them back yet. Let me get the pieces, stick them around. I'll do something with them. Yes, I finally got to my ginger and turmeric table. Now I didn't plant all my ginger out yet. I'm planning on doing it this week. So I'm going to plant a lot of ginger in here. All these pots have been prepped. And remember, all pots have holes. It doesn't matter if they're on the side or on the bottom because you need some sort of drainage. But you can't have your plants sitting in a bucket of water. They're not water plants. So anyways, I came out here and I did most of the turmeric and I wanted to kind of test it. And I've been waiting and yes, they are turning green. Not happily. I don't blame them. I'm freezing. So they're cold. But they are turning green, so I think they're not going to rot out at me. That's, I was worried they were going to rot out on, on me. And then, oh, here's a new one coming up. I don't think that was coming up. Okay, that's good. There's nothing in here. That's why the pot's sitting there. I did plant my black turmeric. Some people call it blue. It's in here. It's in here. See, there's my blue. And then it's in here. No. Oh. oh, yes. Looky, looky, right here. Is that something? So that's coming up. Nothing in there. And then I, there's... Uh, a ginger here, only one ginger, but I'm going to get the rest of the ginger out. So the rest will be ginger and then this will be turmeric and it's just going great. This looks like it's a tomatillo that is coming up, but I've got to go through here because I found, this is nothing, but I found a little bit of ginger in here when I started digging and I thought I got it all out. I don't even know if I'm going to put ginger in there because if you watch my videos, I talk about with me, I want to be able to take a bucket and tip it and then get out all my ginger, turmeric, anything I want, unless I'm harvesting one small piece. If I'm only doing a small piece, then you can just dig in there and take what you need if you're gonna bake cookies or you're gonna make stir fry and you want some ginger. But if you're gonna harvest the whole thing and then plant back what you want, I wanna be able to tip it, go through it, and then put everything back in the pot and plant what I want. It's easier than trying to get into a tote or Gary goes into his garden and digs the ground out. Good, he can dig the ground out, I'm not going to. All right, let's go into the bird garden now. Isn't this something? I don't even know where Gary, looks like Gary took an old mattress. This looks like it's a mattress frame. I'm not sure. And he made this years ago and he made a track and he, we slide it back and forth, just a pole. I'll have to show you how he did it or what he used. And I can go in and out of my garden and try to keep some of the rabbits out. Yeah, he put it for the rabbits. You don't think they go along the block wall and squeeze through? They do. The smart ones do. The ones that aren't so smart look in from there or they go somewhere else to eat. So here I am still working and we've got the tree color going. Nothing in there, but I am gonna get something in that thing that Gary picked up years ago in the trash somebody threw away. I'll get planted in there soon. But I've got all this tree colored, more geraniums everywhere, more green tree colored and purple tree colored everywhere. Lemon verbena, mint, my dragon fruit. I use the irrigation tubing 
to hold it up and it's working, but I am going to start trimming it because it bites. It's got a lot of thorns on it and I just don't like cutting it because every piece, every section will have flowers on it. We had like 50 to 100 last year, but I am going to do something. So I think I'm going to set it up differently like no one set it up before and I'll start cutting off sections and you'll see maybe you'll want to try it because you can do it I know in a small little area and grow dragon fruit it's so cool to grow isn't this beautiful look at the lemon verbena flowering it smells so good isn't that beautiful and to think it died back almost completely in the winter and look how gorgeous it looks now you want to see something that looks horrible look powdery mildew so what do you do with that do I burn it? No. It's gone. It's all going to go in there. This is some old soil I had from a year ago, and I'm not sure how good it is. So I dragged it out here because I want to get rid of it. It's garden soil. That is not potting soil, so it won't retain water. But I might use it on the bottom of some of my pots and get rid of it because I'm actually using more of my own soil now than that. Then this is flowers. I've got the irrigation quarter inch tubing there holding it up because I can't grow flowers here unless I protect them. The birds will come in and eat the little tiny seedlings. So I've got some zinnias coming up in there and I may have a marigold coming up. And then the walking onions there, isn't that cool? And there's the hose that's in my trough. And I do have to get this thing set up like fairly quick. And what's back here? These totes are amazing. They're what, seven years old and still going strong. Would I try to move them around? No, I'm gonna leave them. This is, it looks like that's orange mint. See how the leaves are around her? That is gorgeous. It's feeding off the bottom. The water comes out there and feeds that more orange mint. This, I'm going to pull the whole thing out and put it somewhere. I'm not sure where, but that I think is an old dazzling blue kale. And then I might do lettuce or something else on the top. This is chocolate mint, walking onions. Now the lemon vermina is, let's see, lemon ver vermina is down there in a pot in this tote. And then I've got some garlic chives walking onions there more this is chocolate mint or peppermint it could be peppermint here's my mushroom plant thank goodness I'm starting to think about taking cuttings I've got one growing already on the deck that is a plant that's hard to find it's called a mushroom plant the leaves taste like you're eating mushrooms really good but it is fantastic if you can find it keep in mind they don't like too much sun and they like well drainage so I'm going to kind of clean that up too these walking onions are straight in the ground they're growing right out of the ground Little piece got down there, made sure it was well watered, and it's doing good. And here I'm going through my pots. Holes, no holes, and open bottoms. That's how I'm stacking them, so I'll know what to grab when I want it. And then more chocolate mint. I always tell you, when people say, you don't want mint in your garden, and if you don't, do not plant it this way. Put it up on a chair, a table, or something, because look at this. All this mint is coming out of the bottom. It is coming, see how... This is a runner, and the runner comes out. It will actually take the runner, go down in the soil. It could go six, eight, ten inches deep and find the way out, and then you've got mint everywhere. So you'll have a nice pot of mint sitting in your garden thinking, well, I'm containing it. No, you're not. It's going to take off and grow everywhere, and that's how it takes off. Look at that. Last year, I got polka dot plants. I went inside at, oh, I think it was Home Depot. It was so funny, and they had one plant for $9 in a pot. I went outside, and they had a whole tray for $3.88, all different colors, because inside they sold it as a house plant, and outside they sold it as ground cover. Look at that. It came back all on its own. So let's see, what else is going on here? I'm cleaning up here. I've got to fix that. The doves keep knocking it over. They're so big, they come in here and they scare themselves. One lands, starts eating, and another one lands and scares the other one because he banged on that, and then they all take off and they knock it over. But what they're not knocking over are all the feeders I made that are hanging. Isn't that cool? Look at this one. Irrigation tubing. Is that cool? And they come in here and they swing. You've got the irrigation quarter inch tubing there. You know how I make those wire clips that you can tie? These are like ties or clips or whatever you want to call them. There's a wire inside. Go back and see that video because I'm using it for everything. That's a hook. So I can take this off and clean it, put it back. That is just so cool. And then I've got the hummingbird feeder also made my own hook. You can make it the size you want and it literally costs pennies. So I am working in here. I've got some Swiss chard in the ground coming up. And then this is the, it's called hummingbird's lunch. 
they love it. I've got one plant there and then one plant that died back and it came back and it's back there. Geraniums and then our fountain. So it's not done yet, but I'm, I'm, give me time. I'm working on it because I want to do a lot more fountains. Here's my bottle. That's a soda bottle. I've had goldfinches come here and take a bath. It is so cute. Nobody's going to take a bath really today because again, nothing's going to run in this weather. And then real quick here, I'll show you. I've been wanting to take this out but it's growing so big, I don't know what to do. This is what happens when you don't stake. Oh my gosh, there's tomatoes back there. When you don't stake the tomatoes and you let them go wild, it's not good. Because there could be tomatoes in there, but then your vermins are gonna come in there and find them before you. You won't even know they're there, but they will. See, there's tomatoes back there too. And that's the thing. So this isn't good, but it's looking so happy. So when I get to this area, no rush, I'll decide what I'm gonna do. And I've got some brassicas. And this looks like, yep, this is a purple sprouting broccoli. It was purple, so there was a cutting in there. I'll see when I get to that. But all in all, I'm quite happy the way everything is. It's so pretty when the sun comes out and all the fountains are going. My candlestick, I love the candlestick. The hummingbirds love it, the goldfinches love it. And then a simple bowl with rocks. And then I've got this one I bought at the thrift store for like $20, $25 years ago. Another bowl with a cup. Then I've got my cement bowl I put back there. They love that. There's another bucket in the back with a bowl. And then I've got my frog. It all is running and all the birds are coming from everywhere and splashing. And it's amazing. We have like 60 species of birds that come in here. And I've got a whole video on that. The video says there's 50, but since then we've had a lot more come in here. It's pretty, we're trying to clear it out so we can walk and service. And I put those geraniums back there too. Put that one back there too. Isn't that cool? I gotta get rid of more of this. I wanna get more geraniums back there. I mean, it's not that beneficial for anything besides looks. It's just so beautiful, drought resistant. I don't have to think about it. When you've got something you don't have to think about, that's a good thing. Nothing going on here. I've got to change all this up. This has got black fly. And now I got to get rid of it. The little bush tits come and eat it. But I have to get rid of it because this is my last of my lemon balm. I let it die back. And then I found this this morning, which means I've got hope. And the only way I'm going to get that is to take this out, tip it out, get that piece that's still alive, get a new pot and clean this all up. Black fly, just take a hose or put a glove on and wash them off. You can get rid of them easy. I just haven't bothered. I figured it's there. Let the bush tits come in and feed the little tiny gray birds. Let them do their thing until I'm ready to get to it. And all this is going to be turned back. All of it. I'm going to have the, the doves. See what, how heavy they are? They scare themselves. I'm going to do a lot of trimming in here. I'm going to trim back a lot of the mint. This is spearmint. Again, it got away from me once, but I happen to like it. There's nothing nicer than stepping through it and it smells so good. But I want to trim it back and cut it down. Can't get rid of it, so it's going to come back. Well, you can. I have gotten rid of it. You just, like a carpet, pull it up, clean it up. After a few times of doing it, it's gone. But I want to trim it back and I want to be able to get to all these old raised beds. These were old, I've talked about it a million times, kennels that came out of a grooming salon and they threw them out, and so Gary brought them here, and he set them up, and that one's set up with some plants in it, but I want to go through. There's my pride and joy that's all, it's still alive, but it's got a lot of powdery mildew. Again, they don't like this weather, but as soon as you cut it, new green growth comes, so I'm not too worried about it, so I'm gonna go through that. But I want to get these with, you know, real plants in there. I mean, the walking onions are fine. There's nothing in there. I've got tomatoes growing in that one. So I'm gonna go through them and clean this all up. Again, I'm kind of going little by little is what I'm doing because I really have a project I want to do in the front yard so bad because I think it's going to benefit so many people that have a teeny, teeny garden that can grow so much. Canary seed. And where did the canary seed come from? Out of the seeds we feed because we feed the birds seed that comes from the pet store. So it's pet grade, not just feed quality, not the wild bird seed. So it's a parakeet mix. And that's got, or a budgie mix, parakeet mix, it's got canary seed and millet, and there's whole oats, those won't grow. But there are different small seeds in there, and the birds like it, and then whatever falls, if the insects don't find it, or the birds don't find the little tiny seedlings, and it looked like it fell in an area where they couldn't find it, then it will grow. If they find it, they'll eat it. Purple tree colored all through there. Those are four o'clocks. 
They grow like a weed. I don't mind them because the hummingbirds love the flowers, have a red trumpet flower. And that's nothing. I just stuck that there. And then here, we'll see. I'm still hoping they're going to make a comeback. I don't know. I'm still not sure what's going to happen with them because of our weather. So we'll kind of keep an eye on that. You know what? Before I go to the rainbow garden, look at this. Look at the celery. Isn't that beautiful? Purple against the celery growing with the flowers. It looks so gorgeous. More of these totes that are really old. About six years old. Got chocolate mint, more celery. That's the celery and that's mint. Gonna do, you know what I'm gonna do with this? I'll tell you what I'm gonna do with this. Gonna take all that soil out because I haven't planted in there in over a year, not for any particular reason. Just didn't get to it. I'm gonna dump these three bags in there that I consider not good soil. It won't grow anything. Gonna throw it in there, throw a bunch of seeds like celery seeds. If it starts to grow, then I know I can use it. Otherwise, I will never buy that again because nothing will grow in it. It's probably got an herbicide in it, and it could take three months, six months, a year, sometimes three years to work its way out. This is from over a year ago now. So even though it may take a year to work its way out, it's not doing it in the bag. It's not doing anything. So I'm going to throw all three bags in there after I get that soil out that I know is good because I did grow things in it about a year ago. And then I will load it up with colored leaves and different things from the garden. So I will hopefully let it work its way into turning good. The earthworms will find their way in there on their own. And once everything is looking good, I can either plant in there so I don't have to throw it in the trash. Or I can start using the soil. So we'll see. And here I just throw leaves and stuff. That I know is good. It's from my garden. You know what? Let's take a quick step in here. Because I did a video the other day in here. I'm starting to work in here. And look at this. This is, this is the tomatoes I did. I'm not sure how long ago. Almost a week ago. Look at that. They're doing good. Look at this one. This is the brandy wine. He's got to plant this. we got to find it, a place for peppers. And I've got so much more to do. I should come live and just sit here and let you watch me. And then really bore everybody. And Gary's got... Dragon fruit growing, more dragon fruit. These are the tomatoes, his specialty. I keep hoping that those squash are going to come up, and they're not. And then I don't know what he's growing through here. He's got all the stuff. He's got some bananas. My daughter gave him some bananas, so they're growing there. This is culantro. I planted this. Let me show you. Like a hundred of them, and they are finally getting their real leaves. See the kind of saber-tooth-looking leaves? They're kind of sharp. I can start to plant those somewhere, and that's what I'm hoping to do. And then I've got more tomatoes back there, and then here I've got dragon fruit. It's kind of like too many already. So I'm going to kind of see what I'm going to do in here. But this is, this is his room. This is his go-to place. This is nice because it's always warm. I don't know. Can you read it? Because I can't. Maybe you can read it. It's like 20 degrees warmer in here then outside. So it's a nice place to sit and work on a cold day. And this is my little, uh, my flash fish, but I have another one too that's bigger, but I love this. Look at this. You just turn it on and it is ready to go. Look, it's still full and I've been using it. The battery is still good. I think everybody should have one. I really think that's a must have because that's an emergency uh, electricity. I know people buy that for just using for tools around the house. I use it for a backup battery in case electricity goes out. I still have internet. Some people have a C-cap. Is that what they call it? They plug that in if they lose their electricity, oxygen. You can do whatever you want with it. It's great for emergency. So I think it's a must. And you can get them so cheap. I've seen them for like, I, well, I paid less than 100 but they've been about $100. And they should last for two or three years, maybe longer. All right, so let's go now outside and see the rainbow garden. So that's my rosemary that I bought many years ago at the 99 cent store. It was actually a little pot with like three different things in it. Um, I don't remember everything in it, but the rosemary was in it. Isn't that something? Here's some strawberries growing in a grow bag. It's the only thing I'm really growing that and the one pepper in there. Otherwise, it just dries out too much for me. And then more flowers. You see this each month. This is just a pomegranate that came up on the deck and I'm trying to figure out if I want it or not. Oh, look at that squirrel. Can you see the squirrel sitting on the doghouse that nobody uses? Obviously, he does. Look at that. He goes, go away. I've got things to go eat in your garden. I don't think so. Go find something else. 
Anyways, we're going to ignore him and pretend he's not there. So let's go in, let's see, let's see what's going on here. My onions are, I know they're overcrowded. I have to start picking more and getting them out. So then they'll, well, they'll grow better. So I'm going to try to do that soon. Gary's been bringing up tons of onions from his garden. This is the potatoes I want to harvest at. Down here, I'm going to put some Malabar spinach because it's just kind of hard to get to. So I'm going to kind of do stuff in there that I really don't want. Oh, well. You know, the rabbits like hanging around here. Maybe I'll get some stuff in there for the rabbits. They don't eat Malabar spinach. This is my strawberries. You saw me put this together and they're coming along really good. You know what this is? I must have had a pepper in there. These are pepper plants. See how the point on the leaf is? Let me see if I move my hands so you can see. That's how I know the tomatoes aren't quite as sharp like that. They're sharp, they're pointy, but not as sharp. That is some sort of pepper, probably a black cobra which I don't need anymore. But just so you know, that's how sometimes you know. And then here, there's still potato mint in here. I don't know if I want to do potato mint. Oh, it's growing. I want to redo this before it takes off. Nothing in there, nothing there yet. I haven't done anything there yet. I just have to freshen up my pepper and get this all done. I want, I think I'm going to do peppers. I want to get all the peppers in there. I'd like to do sweet peppers. The top has got the Fresno. That's got a red one on it right now. And then this is the fig tree. I planted from seed that really shouldn't be here because it's too close to the house. So at some point it might come out. This is the water feature I made out of cement. Look at the leaf pattern. Isn't that cool the way I made that? It runs really good on a nice warm day with sun because there's no sun right now. And let's see, there is the solar panel way up there. But without sun, it won't run, but the birds love it. I made a ball down there. I haven't even set that up. I forgot about it. I've been trimming some of the leaves, as you can see. And sometimes you forget something's there. So there's my ball. I should set that up and get another video on how to do it. Here I've got zucchini. Now I didn't think this plant was going to make it. See how long the stem is and kind of wonky right there. Okay, what happened was I planted it and I didn't get it out and it wasn't in a good place. All my fault. And it got long and I thought, oh, it's going to die. I'm going to throw it out. Then I thought, no, I'll stick it in here. And it's growing. So we'll see if it makes it fine, but I do have to start some more seeds. Then I've got the walking onions. You know how I love to layer. Oh, look, look. Do you see the worms? I'm hoping you can see a worm. I see a roly poly, but I absolutely see a worm. That's why I love to layer. I see it's throwing roots out there, but that's okay. Layering keeps dampness there, brings earthworms. They love going under pots. And the earthworms have their castings that your plant loves. So you can do that too. It doesn't always have to be a pitcher. It could be something as simple as layering with pots. I've got a tomato in here. The soil dropped down. You know what? I may not have done that one this year. I might have threw a little bit in here and the mustard grew. And I decided to just put the pot in here all brand new and it can send its roots out on the bottom because the eggplant is making a comeback. And I didn't want to tear out the eggplant. So that's what I did there. And all along the bottom, you can see. We got flowers now. Isn't that cool? The rabbits don't eat geraniums. Another plus. So I've got pink ones here. Real pretty. I've got pink ones down there. I've got pink ones there. Then I've got a really pretty color. We'll get to that in a second. Then I've got this one. It was throwing variegated leaves, which doesn't mean anything other than the plant was stressed. But I see the new leaves are not. So we'll see as it grows. There's a little strawberry back there. That's a cutting right here of the purple tail that I trimmed down. See all, the, see all the new growth coming on it? There's growth here, and then there's growth right there. I decided it was too tall and needed a good trimming. I would like to have it bushy and low. So I took it and I stuck a stem there, and I've been sticking stems everywhere. If they grow, they grow, and if they don't, they don't. Look at the yellow zucchini. I somehow ended up with yellow zucchini. I didn't plant them. I bought a pot and there was four, of, I think there were four plants in there and I thought, oh cool, maybe there were five. And then I thought, do I really want it? I wasn't really that thrilled and guess what? They're growing really good. So I'm really, really happy, but that's yellow zucchini. So anyways, we'll see if this plant stops growing variegated leaves. I just think it was stressed because it was in the pot too long. And then I've got the zinnias, little zinnias. This one's from last year, the plant. And these are the new ones that are coming up from the seeds that dropped in there. And then, of course, my pitcher. You know how I love my pitcher? Water the pitcher so it leaches out and feeds your plants. This has been fantastic. I'm putting pitchers everywhere. Here's another pitcher. You want to see what I did here? 
I put the pot in here so I remember what I bought. It was a Burpees. It was $3.33 for golden zucchini. And there was a bunch of plants in there. So now it re will remind me and there's more stuff I throw in there. See, there's the purple kale. I've got one there. And you know what? It's growing. If it grows, that's fine. I'll leave it, and in the winter, I'll have nice purple kale. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I didn't want to mess around with it, so I just stuck them in there. They grow really good if they're near a pot, because it will stay damper near a pot or near a pitcher. So if you've got cuttings and you don't want to mess around with it, you just want to stick it in there. If it makes it, makes it. Keep that in mind. And then this is the last little yellow squash or golden zucchini. I didn't know where to put it. Threw some kitty around, litter around it, and we'll see if it makes it. See, is there any squash on the bottom? No. See, I could remove this leaf if I want. I think I'll leave it right now. Red vein sorrel. My pepinos are starting to throw fruit. I've got one back here. You can cook with them at any stage. Let's call this one green. Or you can wait till they get bigger and kind of get a yellow, little bit of a yellowish tinge, and then they're sweet. Here is where the watermelon's been coming up but they're not really growing. Mustard's coming up, volunteer tomato plants are coming up. So oh, that's why I know it's just too cold. Watermelon just can't make it. I have seen the monarchs laying eggs. I haven't seen any caterpillars yet. I will have to admit, with nature, it's very possible the bush tits come in here and they could be doing something. The orioles are here. They eat hornworms and any, anything. I don't know, I haven't seen them in here, but I do know the bush tits come through here. So the goldfinches, but they tend to look for more seeds. And then here's another milkweed. Oh, we see now this is what I'm excited about. This watermelon down there, it could be because it's a greenhouse effect, is growing. They came up on their own from a watermelon seeds I just dumped in there. So I'm hoping these will make it. Then I'll have a good start. There's another plant. I have done in these totes, 18 gallon totes, three watermelon plants. You can do three as long as you feed them good. So those two pots back there, the pink one, I can't really reach through here. Hear this. See what that is? That's a two system. So I can load up in there and that will feed them. So doing three plants, make sure you feed them really good because watermelon are heavy feeders, but they don't have a massive root system like zucchini. So you can get away with three plants. This is potatoes. So we'll, we'll see what happens later on the potatoes. I've got two tomato plants in here and a tiny pepper. It was, it was so tiny when I put it in here. I didn't think it was going to make it. Still doesn't look that good. So I just stuck it in there instead of composting it. But I've got these two tomato plants and I've got a pitcher back there and that will help feed it. Otherwise, two tomato plants could be too many, but if you feed them really good, then it will work. And then I put another tomato plant here and then I've got my walking onions here. And then I've got a little lettuce. And this is just where I'm still propagating some of the plants when I think about it. And I'm going to get more seeds growing there. And then, oh, as I was saying, so on the bottom here with the buckets, when the water comes out of the totes, it's watering the buckets. And I've got celery growing. And then this is the pretty one. Isn't this gorgeous? I want to do more cuttings off of that. Look at the flower on that. Another geranium, kind of a shiny leaf probably a wanderer. And then this one is the one I picked up as a piece a year ago. And it's got the most beautiful flower. I didn't know until this year. It's got its own pot now. It was growing over there earlier and I transplanted it, just yanked it out. And then in here is a purple tree collard. So that's what's going on there. And my pizza garden, I can't say anything bad. I love this. I've got my oregano taken off. This is oregano, it was a cutting, and look how it is going wild. I've got my sage. This is regular sage, the green sage. This is tricolored sage, a mustard. I didn't plant it, but I'm gonna leave it. And then down here, I've got some more oregano coming up. Nothing in there right now. Down there in the corner is basil. That little tiny green plant is basil. There's another basil that just started to come up from seed here. I put seeds in here. This is rosemary, it was a cutting. Look at the trunk on that thing now. A cutting in a pot. So it's growing in there. And then I've got my thyme. And yes, some of you are saying, trim it back. I know I have to, but it smells so good. Look at all the new growth. It smells mm, incredible. Finally, I couldn't get thyme growing for like two years. And then now I got it. it likes well drainage. It's up on the top. It's happy and I'm not going to touch it. And that's it. Again, see, I buy one bag and that bag's been sitting there for weeks. And if I plant a tomato plant, I can take a handful, move the squash, a handful. This is almost full. So 
it's it's really good if you want to use potting soil just get something this is one of the cheaper ones but I've never personally I've never had a problem with miracle Grow. my daughter said she hasn't had a problem with miracle Grow as far as I remember her telling me and I think they test their soil so I haven't had any herbicides in their uh, persistent herbicides show up so everything seems to grow it does have some sort of plant food in there I like that it's well drained but you know keep in mind if you get a bag and it's too dry when you open it just pour some water in there fold it back and it will rehydrate the soil because sometimes it's dry and that doesn't mean it's bad more polka dot plants from that one tray I bought back here and this is my Fresno look at that it made it all winter tucked back here so I've got to get this all done this is, doesn't have any soil in it get that done the only one that's got soil is the top bucket and that's it we've gone completely around you got to see everything probably super long but I'm thinking it's going to be a good year when it comes to all the plants growing there'll be certain things that are going to be slow like the watermelon maybe the cucumbers I was planning on doing more tomatoes and things in here but then as time went I go well, what am I waiting for let's plant what's going to grow good I've got a broccoli back here and just a kid's bucket I had so this is doing really good here. So it's got its own home, my eggplant. So it, it's going to be good. I think it's going to be really good. Let's put it this way. We have plenty of food. So I'm going to go do a harvest. And I, oh, this is funny. Another thing you can plant on the ground. Mustard. The mustard that was growing here, that's why we have baby mustard everywhere because the seeds, it went to seed and it's growing seeds from last year that are coming up now. The rabbits won't eat it, which is good. So it's going to sit there. And I'm going to leave it just because it's too funny that they come through here. They don't like celery. They don't like geranium. They do like the potato mint that grows in there. They will eat some of that. But why not grow on the ground what they don't want to eat and then occasionally give them something they do want to eat in hopes they'll leave your garden alone. So I hope you enjoyed this. Spin around the garden for June 1st. They say it's summer, you know, some people say, hey, June 1st is Memorial Day, it's summer. No, no, it doesn't feel like summer, but summer will be here in the next three weeks and maybe it will warm up a little bit so I can start getting more cucumbers set outside, more different types of squash set out outside. And well, I'm happy right now because all I wanted was zucchini and I've got zucchini everywhere. I've got another plant. I've got to go find it. It's got a great big zucchini that I want to use for tonight. And I'm really happy with everything growing. So with that, have a wonderful day. Go ahead and ask me questions. I'll do the best I can. Get yourself some irrigation tubing and tool. Don't have to buy a 500 foot roll. And I think you're gonna be amazed how much money you're going to save using that and the things you could do with it. I mean, quarter inch does things great. And so does half inch. This is quarter inch and it's just a little hummingbird swinging in the garden. With that, have a wonderful day and don't forget, to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. So you walked around the garden with me and you saw a bunch of stuff. I only pick what we're going to use within one to two days. The Swiss chard will be for breakfast tomorrow morning. The peppers will be for dinner tonight. The squash will be probably for dinner and maybe for breakfast tomorrow morning. The lettuce will be for dinner tonight. Peppers, of course, and the little tiny tomato are going to go into our stir fry to have in our tacos. And that squash, ooh, in with that ground beef.